As we keep believing, let's keep believing. That's the only way out now. Let's keep believing.
comes a time in one's life all hope is lost. There comes a time in one's life you feel like giving up. What do you do at that point in time? Keep believing. Second Corinthians chapter 4. God wants to encourage us again. He wants to teach us again. He wants to educate us again. He wants to direct us again. Even in this time when it seems we are living in a hopeless world. When we seems nothing is working anymore. God is saying, keep on believing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Don't be weary. The whole challenge you are going through today is focused for you to be weary. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, see, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy. Next, I want to go. Second Corinthians chapter 4, open your Bible. Verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 4. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Let it together, everybody want to go. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. As we re receive mercy, we faint not. Tell yourself, I faint not. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, do not faint. Don't be weary. Look at yourself and tell yourself, I refuse to be weary. We are living in the era of discouragement. When you have so much money in the bank, you cannot save them. Living in the time that things are collapsing gradually and nothing seems to work anymore. We are living in the day. Each day with a new challenge. Each day come with a new situation. You wake up in the morning. What knocks at your door is the problem. It seems as though God is no more in control. I said so last year, children of God, hear me today. That we are coming to a time when nothing seems to work. But the only thing that can sustain you is great joy. Having joy in the midst of that difficulty. Having joy in the midst of that pain. Having joy in the midst of that agony. Everything has been constrated, okay, straightened to make you lose focus. 
But God is saying, faint not. I say, faint not. We have reasons to faint. Let me tell you today. One of the things that will make you strong is challenges. You can't run away from it. There are some situations in your life you can't pray out. You can't pass out. You can't sit it out. It's there for you to keep going. The hymn said, as, it, as we have faith in the morning, in the night, so also as in the day. God made the day. God made the night. A time comes, it is night time. A time comes, it's the daytime. What do you do? Keep believing. Because there is a victory for you. I said there is a victory for you. Apostle Paul speaking. Two major things which I want to look at this morning. And then we go home. Knowing that God has moved us from famine to freedom. It's already a show. Because the era has come when it shall rain in your desert. When things will begin to work in your life. When things will change in your life. Because a new Nigeria is possible. What in today or what I've been experiencing this year are challenges to push you to where God wants you to be. Challenges orchestrated divinely to push us to where God intends we be. And as we are going through this process, God is saying, don't be weary. Don't be discouraged. Don't agitate. Don't feel as though all hope is lost. He says, therefore, seeing we have received this ministry. There is something that God has put in your hand. Look at your hand. And say, God, thank you for the work of my hand. I say, look at your hand and thank God for the work of your hand. There is nothing that God blesses except what? The work of your hand. So the work of your hand is a ministry. You know, when we talk about ministry, our attention goes, oh, to church. Oh, to have a department in the church. No. That thing you are doing is a ministry. Sin, therefore, we have received this ministry. That thing you are selling is a ministry. That office you are is a ministry. That queer where you stay is a ministry. Everywhere you see yourself is a ministry. And you have received it. What we sustain you, Apostle Paul saying, we have received mercy. May God's mercy speak for you. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? We come to a time when we don't know what to do again. We come to a time when we seem confused. We come to a time when we seem to be in trouble. But there's only one thing that can sustain us. There is only thing that can keep us going. And that is the mercy of God. The Bible says it's not of him that wills. It's not of him that runs. Is of God that show it mercy. He said, I show mercy to whom I show mercy. I pray in your ministry, in that your job, in that your career, in that which you do that give God praise. Receive mercy. Receive mercy. Receive mercy. I've said here often times for those following me, when we talk about, we are not just talking about sin. When we talk about mercy, we're not just talking about transgression. We are talking about mercy. We are talking about what separates our God from every other God. Hear me watching me on Facebook this morning. Every other God can show love. Every other God can show kindness. Every other God can do miracles. Every other God can do good things. 
But there are some things they cannot do. They don't show mercy. But our God shows mercy. I say your God shows mercy. I say your God shows mercy. He will show you mercy. Somebody say God will show me mercy. Because that's who he is. He's a merciful God. They will be said for his mercies in Jesus forever. Have you received this ministry? That thing you do that seems not to work. That thing you do that seems to be slowed down. That thing you do that seems there's no way out. God will show you mercy. Can I hear louder? Amen. Have you received this ministry? Number one. Have you received this mercy? Number two. I refuse. I refuse to give in. I refuse to be discouraged. Say, we faint not. We faint not. Why should I not faint? Look at from verse 16. Second Corinthians 4. From verse 16. Very powerful. Second Corinthians. Why should I not faint? Why should I not give in? Why should I not be discouraged? Verse 15 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For all things, okay, 16. For which cause we faint not? Oh, when you look at from verses 1 to 15, it tells us the causes, the reasons. Why we should faint. The troubles. Why we should faint. How do you explain it that in Nigeria you buy dollar, you exchange dollar? I'm sorry, you exchange naira. If someone has told you on 31st night in Karaba, 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 in year 2023, you are going to buy 10,000 for 12,000, will you say amen? Answer me, church. You are looking too holy this morning. That the first night service, Karaba, 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 thus says the Lord, in this year, 10,000 shall be saved for 12,000. Will you say amen? You say a false prophet. For that is what we are seeing today. Challenges are there to discourage us. Challenges are there to make us ask questions. Is God still here? knocking at our door daily. Daily you encounter a new challenge. He says, for this cause, because of several attacks, because of several problems, we faint not. The clause, we faint not, appear twice. Showing us that we have a reason to faint. Tell your neighbor, you have a reason to faint. But don't faint. If somebody tells you that you have no reason to faint, that's a lie. The challenge in our health system is enough reason to faint. Many are dying in Nigeria. Not because it is their time to die, but because there is no health care. Many are bankrupt. Not because they don't have business idea, but because there is no financial system to support them. Many today can't prosper in their education. Why? Because there is no system that can promote you. They assume everybody must write jam. Without jam, thank God. But that's that. that not help us. We have enough reason to faint. Many are at the age of marriage, young men, but they don't have two million to get married. They begin to think and thank. God, when will you remember me? For this cause, we faint not. But though our outward man perish, Though we are growing older, 
day by day. Though our income is being reduced day by day. Though the cost of living is rising day by day. Though we think, 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 and we are growing gray hair by force day by day. Though the people we are owing are challenging us day by day. Though our utmost man perish. The greatest is lack of money. Somebody hearing me? And I call it monaria. The greatest sickness you will encounter is when you don't have money. You want to lick ice cream. And you think of ice cream. Think of ice cream. Wish of ice cream. Dream of ice cream. At the end, you swallow your saliva. It depends. And God helps you. You are wondering ice cream and your neighbor passed with a bowl of ice cream. You say, God, why me? And something drops within you that God has failed you. Something drops within you that you have been forsaken. Something that drops within you that you have been abandoned. For though an outward man perish, yet there is a renewal. Somebody say renewal. Somebody say renewal. In this service, your hope shall be renewed. Those things that seem not to work, we begin to work. Because God is bringing us out from Famine into a place of freedom where we be enjoy his goodness in the name of Jesus. We faint not. He said in verse 17 For our light affliction, whatever you are going through today is light. Whatever. Pastor, I have not paid my house rent. Is a light affliction. Pastor, I have not paid my children's school fees. Is a light affliction. Pastor, I have no job. Is a light affliction. Pastor, I'm not yet married. Is a light affliction. I'm married. I have no children. Is a light affliction. I don't have money in my business. Is a light affliction. Whatever you are going through is a light affliction. It's something that is for a moment. Something that is transient in nature. For our light affliction, tell your neighbor, light affliction. That thing that causes you sleepless night is the light affliction. Perhaps I thought by now somebody would have engaged me. Is a light affliction. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, there is no naira, is for a moment. I say what? It's for a moment. Your hand will still touch naira notes, your pocket will still be loaded with naira notes. It's for a moment. I'm so glad I'm living in the time like this. When we see God moving, I thank God we are living in a time like this. When we see the goodness of God all around us, we may not look like it, but there's a walk at your life. There's a walk in your life. God is walking in your life. But to will and to do of his good pleasure for our light affliction is but for a moment. That sickness. Is for a moment. That challenge in your job is for a moment. That trouble in your home is for a moment. That staggering business is for a moment. All through the Bible, all that God called the men of faith, the time came that they fainted. If you are fainting today, due to your present situation, 
you are not alone because you are not the first person. A time came in the life of Abraham, the man we call the father of faith. God gave Abraham a promise, seven promises, what he should do. And Abraham set out in faith. And God began to renew the covenant, began to fortify the covenant, began to keep the promises. But Abraham came to a time he was discouraged. He knelt down and said, God, so I'm going like this without having a child. Put on your imagination. Genesis 16. Don't be weary. For what you are going through today, Genesis chapter 15. From verse 1. A time came in time of your life when you become weary. When you feel like venting. Whether you are a man of faith or not. A time comes. Because there are situations orchestrated to make you grow weary. Abraham in chapter 12 left Haran, came to Egypt. Chapter 13, he left Egypt, came to the coast of Canaan. They are lost, separated from him. And God told him as Lord left, Abraham, look up. Wherever your eyes shall see, I give to you. East, west, north, and south. And Abraham began to grow in wealth, became rich, became wealthy, became sufficient in all things. Abraham went and fought a battle and delivered his nephew, Lot. But within him, he felt there was something wrong. Chapter 15 of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. After all these things, after all Abraham had gone through, after going to fight the battle, after paying his tithe for the first time, there was still a despair in his heart. There was still a challenge in his heart. And God spoke out. I don't know how you came. I don't know your weariness. I don't know area you feel like being discouraged. God is telling you today, faint not. Don't be weary. God said, Abraham, fear not. I am thy shield. I will defend you. I will protect you. I will ensure that things good come out of you. I am thy exceeding great reward. Verse 2. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will that give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me, that has given me no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my hay. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This shall not be thy hay, for he that shall come forth out of thy own boil shall be thy hay. Now, 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 follow the story. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you don't understand traditional stories, you don't follow the Bible accurately. God saw what was in the mind of Abraham. Are we together? In the physical, he was a warrior. He went with his 300 servants and fought the battle of the five kings. He won them. Went to Sodom and Gomorrah and fought the battle, delivered Lot out of them. He came with wealth. He came with money. He saw the high priest, uh, Melchizedek, and paid his tithe, Melchizedek. But within him, there was a despair. Within him, there was a weariness. Within him, there was a trouble. This morning, 
what is in your mind? Do we still judge God faithful? If God should astray our mind right now, what will God bring out from our minds? What are we thinking? God saw the thought of Abraham and he said, Abraham, don't be afraid. What are your fears? Ask your neighbor, what are your fears? Abraham, fear not. I'm your shield. I'm your exceeding great reward. <laughs> Abraham sighed. What will you give me? See, I go childless. Because of what God told him, he spoke out. That means that that had been a problem in his mind so far. Based on this morning, what is discouraging you? What area are you fainting? He was called the man of faith. But a time came, he was discouraged. So if you are feeling, if you are being discouraged this morning, don't feel bad. It's part of life. That's why God is telling you today, don't faint. You seem as though your bills are piling. Don't be discouraged. It's a part of life. Those bills shall be paid. I don't know how it is. Abraham came to a point. He became this. But God delivered him. God will show you mercy in this service. I said, God will show you mercy in this service. God will show you mercy in this service. In the name of Jesus. Do I talk about Moses? The great deliverer. Moses is a man that plays so much role in the God's agenda. A man that the Bible covered his name on the four books. Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. Talk about Moses. God dedicated four major books on a man to see how vital he was in God's agenda. Brought up in the palace, trained in the bush, and became a mighty man in the desert. Brought up in the palace for 40 years, trained in the bush in Midian for 30 years, and became a warrior in the wilderness for 40 years. For the time came, he became discouraged. When the members of his church began to do she, 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 me, 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 she, 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 he became weary. Say, God, I told you, I don't want to be a pastor. God, I told you, I'm okay with my business in media and as a shepherd boy. God, I told you, say, I should leave these people. These people are gossiping too much. These people are always complaining how I wish I'm in Egypt eating lettuce and cucumber. How I wish I'm in Egypt eating a uh, carrot and, leaf, and, 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 and lettuce. How I wish we should go back. Moses, no better for you. God, what do I do to them? God, kill me. I'm no more being a pastor. And God laughed. Say, Moses, you can't be weary at this time. Look at everybody, you can't be weary at this time. You can't be weary being in a choir. You can't be weary being in a prayer department. You can't be weary being a an usher. You can't be weary at this time. Moses came a time he stood alone. Everyone was speaking against him. Everyone was speaking against him. Even his elder sister speaking against him. Elder brother speaking against him. He stood alone. Said, God kill me. What is wearing you down? What is discouraging you today? What is making you feel as though it won't work? It happened to Moses. But God said he was the meekest man on earth. So if you are today discouraged, God will show you mercy. I said God will show you mercy. He has been there all this while. We received this ministry. We obtained mercy. So we faint not. There is a reason to faint, but refuse to faint. There's a reason to give up, but refuse to give up. There's a reason to surrender, refuse to surrender. Who is why I talk? A mighty prophet called Isaiah. Okay, talk 
about Elijah. Elijah. We knew how he started. The Bible opened his book, First Kings 17, and Elijah, the Tishbite. Elijah, the Tishbite. The Hebrew word for Tishbite means somebody who has no background. Elijah, that was nobody. Elijah, whose parents were not rich. Elijah, whose parents were not senators. Elijah, whose town was not known. Elijah, of Tishbite. He stood up one day and challenged his royal, whose name was Ahab. Say how, as far as I live, there shall be no rain until I decide. He must be a strong warrior, praise God. Are we together? And taking us on a journey of people of great faith who came to a time, they became discouraged. They were seeing the, the promise. So if you are discouraged today, don't feel that you are alone. It's a part of life. Elijah, he spoke to Ahab, the king of Israel, who had the wicked wife called Jezebel. If there was someone to speak to, it wouldn't be the king now. You can talk to the Senate president. You can talk to the governor. You can talk to commissioner. Or you can talk to your local government chairman, but not the president, but Elijah. Nobody, this bite, spoke to the president. And what he said began to affect him. There was no water. And the leader had no water to drink. Have you seen something before and that thing begin to affect you? God will show you mercy. Oh, somebody received mercy this morning. And when the people became sore, God told the leader, go to the brook of charity. Dear, I will sustain you. Elijah carried this footman to his Ghana must go and carry it and escape from, from Israel to the brook of Cherith. And Bible said in the brook there was a little water. That same water Elijah will bath. That same water Elijah used to flush his toilet. That same water Elijah will drink. That same water he used to watch his pot, watch his plate. That same water he used to watch his mouth. That same water at the brook. Pass of Yahudi, I wasn't there, but I've been there at the brook once. And every morning, a rival, we brought this and I get bread. Bring maybe some suya and some uh, chicken pepper soup. Elijah, we say, oh, God is wonderful. God, we are so good, so good. God, you are kind. How do you feel when things work well for you? God is so good. And the Bible says that one day the brook dried. He came back that day the, the, the gate of the brook. Look at the water. No more water. Waited for the raven to bring dinner. The raven didn't show up. He said, okay, maybe there is a cloud, thick cloud, Ravel. In the morning, Ravel did he bring tea and bread. No water. Well, how will you feel in that situation? When your price finishes, you don't have money to buy another one. How do you feel at that time? Your rent expires, and landlord says, I'm giving you the next 30 days. I that you pay, or I throw you out. And that um, automatically remains 24 hours. How do you feel? I don't think Elijah was smiling. I don't think Elijah was happy because the brook dried. And in the midst of that, a voice came, Elijah, go to Zephyrus. Say, well, yes, I'm hearing you, Lord. Speak yourself and hear it. To whose house? To a widow. Ah. God, I thought I'm not dealing with the kings. I thought you will send me to the king of Zaphrit or even to the senators. God said, no, go to the widow's house. Elijah carried his gun, I must go. 
maybe no money in his pocket to go. Use leg. At the gate of Zafrit, he saw a woman. And the woman was gathering two sticks to eat and die. If we are you, will you be happy? Are we together, church? Follow me close this morning. Because certain things we get weary. We assume God has abandoned us or forsaken us. Not knowing that God has an agenda for our lives. I don't know how you are today. God will show you mercy. Can I hear loud that? Someone shall God will show me mercy. I faint not. Say, madam, good afternoon. Say, good afternoon, man. How are you? I'm fine. Say, wow. Madam, please, can I get a cup of cold water? Say, sir, I don't have water in my house. I only have a derika, no, a tomato cup of rice to eat with my son and we die. Maybe in your house now, you don't even have a cup of rice. My God will show you mercy. I only have a handful of flour to bake akara and moi moi. We eat and we die. Maybe in your house now, you don't even have two naira. Oh, 200 naira, sorry. All the money you have have been locked up by the authorities. You feel, how do I pay my bills? This week, my God will show you mercy. The woman began her story. This was a leader whose brook dried up. God told him to come to a place of succor. And the woman began to tell a story. Elijah, will you say praise God or will you blame God? Whatever happens in the Bible happens for admonition. They are not just stories. They are dynamic stories to propel our faith. Just say, okay, woman, don't worry. Just go and prepare for me. To cut the long story short because of time. We saw how there was provision. And there was no lack in there until it went. We saw how Elijah went to Mount Carmel, fought with the prophets of Baal and Asherah. We saw how he defeated all of them. We saw all, we saw all. All this event took place in 1 Kings chapter 17. Then chapter 18, open your Bible. The same great man God Elijah. The same powerful man of God. Powerful prophet. The same man became weary. First Kings chapter 19. Follow me this morning. Are you feeling discouraged? Don't worry. It's part of life. God will show you mercy. Many as have served God in the Bible, a time came, they became weary. A time came, they became discouraged. But God showed them mercy. Same God of yesterday, today, and forever. He never fails. First Kings 19 verse 1. After the defeat of Mount Camel, after Elijah, one man scored, killed 900 false prophets. After a leader had done such a mighty thing, we thought he had arrived. But his faith was punctured. First Kings 19, from verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all, how he has slain all the prophets with the sword. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them, by tomorrow, about this time. 
Verse 3. Everybody want to go. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judea, and there he left his servant. Verse 4. Let me read. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. Are we together? He requested. He planned to commit suicide. What? This was a mighty prophet that yesterday or last week or a few days ago on Mount Camel, he dealt with the first prophet alone, killed them with sword. A few days later, he was in despair. He was discouraged. We are living in the era of one day faithful, one day that cast. Why? As oh my soul, put your trust in the Lord. He said, it's enough now, O oh Lord, take away my life. Can you imagine him quarreling with God? It's enough. God, my wahala is too much. You watching me this morning, when last have you told God to take away your life? Or you sat down in your house and brought that bottle of poison to die because of what somebody told you. You want to give up because of your husband abandoned you or your wife was so you. You want to give up because things seem not to work. May God show you mercy this morning. The same Elijah, who was great and mighty, he sat down under a tree. God, where are you? If you are with me, why ha this is happening to me? God, where are you? It's time I die. God, I want to die. God, please kill me, oh. If you don't kill me, I kill myself. I rebook every spirit of death over your life. In the name of Jesus. He said, is there enough, O oh Lord? Take away my life. For I am not better than my fathers who died. Who told you that? Dutch, why are you getting weary? God will show you mercy. I can go on and on and begin to illustrate the challenges we always face. I can go on and on and begin to tell the stories, applying them to our daily living. But all God is saying, keep a ministry. You have received mercy. Do not faint. Don't allow the things you see today to discourage you. Because whatever you are seeing today is subject to change. Remember, the time you were in primary school, remember the day you wrote a common entrance exam. Remember the day you enter secondary school, they say you are going to do SS, JSS1, JSS2, JSS3, SS1. You begin to count. So the, six years, when will it be? Remember the day you wrote the jam. They said, going to be for four years. Begin to come. When will I graduate? You remember. God has brought you through all this. His hand is still able to save you. He will pay that bills. He will pay that bills. He will pay that bill. He will pay that bill. He will pay that bill. Pay that bill. In the name of Jesus. Elijah didn't die. The same Elijah. That asked God to kill him. Same later that God took to heaven alive. We would have counted him as a man discouraged. But God said, No. I wasn't looking at his discouragement because he's a human being. God is not looking at your despair this morning. He's asking you, keep believing, all shall be well. Keep believing, all shall be well. Keep believing, all shall be well. Tell your neighbor, all shall be well. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. 
Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Shout it louder. Rise up, this my biggest thank God for His word. Oh, rise up, and thank God. Keep shouting. All shall be well. All shall be well. It doesn't matter what it is. All shall be well. It doesn't matter the pain on my body. All shall be well. It doesn't matter the food that has finished in my store. All shall be well. It doesn't matter how I came. All shall be well. I don't look at the discouragement. All shall be well. It's a, it's a, it's a process. It's a process. Don't give in. Open your mouth to God this morning. Open your mouth this morning. Don't close your mouth. Don't close your mouth. Child of God, don't close your mouth. Don't close your mouth. Don't close your mouth. Receive God's word in your heart. Let discouragement melt. Let discouragement melt. Let bitterness melt. Let sorrow melt. Let anger melt. Let unforgiveness melt. What is this? What is this? All shall be well. All shall be well. All shall be well. I refuse to give in. I refuse to give up. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to be weary. I cannot be weary. All shall be well. I'm pressing forward. I'm pressing forward. For all shall be well in my marriage. All shall be well in my business. All shall be well over my children. All shall be well. I'm pressing forward. I'm pressing forward. Child of God, pray. Don't keep quiet. Quiet. You watching me right now in your living room? All shall be well. All shall be well. It shall rain in your desert. God is moving you from famine to freedom. From famine to freedom. From famine to freedom. From famine to freedom. All shall be well. All shall be well. A new hope comes to you. All shall be well. A new strength comes to you. All shall be well. He can bring you this far to abandon you. He can bring you this far to forsake you. Who told you you are alone? Who told you you can be forsaken? Who told you you can be denied? God is not wicked. He will show you his mercy. He will show you his mercy. He will show you his mercy. Your husband is coming your way. Your wife is coming your way. That business is coming up. In the name of Jesus, your husband is saved. Your wife is saved. Your children are saved. All shall be well. All shall be well. All shall be well. Keep praying this morning. Don't be discouraged. 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 Don't allow anything to punch your face. Don't allow your hope to be punctured. God is dear for you. Keep believing, keep trusting. All shall be well. Yes, it shall be well. Yes, it shall be well. The Bible says, say to the righteous, it shall be well with you. I speak as God's servant. I speak as God's voice. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. In that marriage, it shall be well with you. In that family, it shall be well with you. In that business, it shall be well with you. You watching me today, all shall be well with you. God has stepped into your situation. He wrote in a way. Your bitterness is a road in a way. Your sorrow, all shall be well. He can bring you this far to abandon you. Rika Baba, appreciate God this morning. Oh, so Oh, We peace like a river. I say, We so
Dice. Dice. 